Good afternoon, my East End Baptist Church family, and welcome to the 62nd edition of our Words for the Moment. As we have done over the past few months, we bring you these Words for the Moments twice a week, twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so that we might provide you with words of encouragement to get you through the day, to get you through the week, to get you through the month. We've had such a great time in the Lord, allowing the Holy Spirit to fall fresh upon us, to really begin to contextualize our experience here on earth. And we just hope and pray that as we continue to navigate our way through the rest of this year, as we uh, enter into the month of November and December and the holidays, we want you to know that God is with you. And we want you to be encouraged as you finish the year strong. I mean, that's what it's really all about, is finish the year strong. Thank you for joining us on Tuesday. We just had uh, a very powerful word, and I've been receiving a lot of good responses and comments. And so uh, as long as we continue to, to follow God, we know that we are on a good path. As we've done in the previous Thursdays, we've utilized our Thursday as an opportunity to reflect back on our Bible study that we had on last evening. And as I've mentioned to you in our previous Thursday word for the moment, I want to invite you, if you want to come and be a part of our study small group, all you have to do is email us at office at the East End Baptist Church .com, and we'll send you the link that you need in order to join us via Zoom. We had such a great time in the Lord last night as we continue our study on the topic redemption. Just looking at how important the idea of redemption is, how, how the impact that redemption has on our lives not only our past life and our present life, but also our future life. And so on last evening, on last evening, we uh, did a devotional study entitled Waiting for Total Redemption, Waiting for Total Redemption. And we started out by understanding as we look at this passage of scripture coming from Romans chapter 8, verse 11 through 21, that we're really talking about uh, the conditions in which we are currently living. We're talking about the things that we go through. We're talking about the, the impact that life has upon us. And we begin to do a distinction between how life impacts us from a fleshly standpoint and how life impacts us from a spiritual standpoint. And so we talked about this idea of waiting for total redemption because we realize not only are we waiting for redemption, but creation as a whole is also waiting for redemption. Ever since uh, the fall of humankind in Genesis chapter 3, the, the creation as we know it has been groaning and moaning and waiting uh, for God's spirit to come to redeem not only us as humankind, but to redeem his entire creation. And so Romans chapter 8 verse 11 verse through verse 21 was packed with a lot of different uh, ideas. We had some powerful discussions, but as we've done in the past, we just want to lift up one particular idea there that was really, really impactful for us. And so uh, let me read for you that passage of scripture from Romans chapter 8, verse 11 through 21. It says to you from the NIV, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Verse 14 goes on to say, for those uh, who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption of sonship or daughtership. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are indeed children of God. Verse 17 goes on to say, now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering, 
in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider, according to verse 18, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Verse 19 goes on to say, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope that the creation, verse 21 says, that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. What a powerful, powerful, powerful passage of scripture as we were dealing with this idea of waiting for a total redemption. But the verses that 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 really uh, uh, popped for us, that, that, that really galvanized our spirits was verse 15 and 16. Verse 15 says, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves. So we realized last night it's the spirit that sets us free. And it says so that you live, you will not live in fear again. You know, a lot of times when we're living in the flesh, fear comes upon us. But as we live more and more in the spirit, we are provided with courage. We are provided with a sense of strength so that we might not fear again. It says, but rather the spirit you receive brought about the adoption, the adoption of sonship and daughtership. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16 says, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are indeed the children of God. We were so encouraged last night by understanding that we are the children of God. And we really began to delve into this idea of adoption, of adoption. And we realized that when it comes to adoption, adoption basically is when you make one your own. When you make one your own, in other words, you bring that person up, you're raising that child up as if that child is, is, your, is your own child, as if you brought that child into the world. And that's how God relates to us as children of God, to help us to understand that we are the adopted children of God, that he's treating us just like we are his own. As a matter of fact, we are his own. It's he who's bringing us up. He's he who is raising up. And the verse goes on to say, and it's by him we call, we cry, Abba, Father. I know you've heard this terminology before, Abba, Father, but we learned last night that this idea of Abba, Father means that we're calling God Daddy, Father. Daddy, Father. This is a very intimate, very intimate description of who God is, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father. And the imagery that, that we used last night is we begin to reflect and recall upon when we were little children. When we were little children and we've been home all day and our parents may have been out working or whatever the case may be. And if mama, dad and they come home and walk in the door as our loving parent, because we hadn't seen them all day, we would run as little children and we would jump into their arms and we would hug their ne neck tight, never to let go. And we would tell them how much we miss them and how we we're so glad that they our home and we just hop up in their arms and they grab us and they hold us tight. That's that idea of Abba Father is that God has come into our lives and we have run and jumped up into his arms and hugged around his divine neck to squeeze tight and to hold tight and to let God know that we missed him and that we love him and that we 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 cry out to him, Daddy, Father, Abba, Father. And my beloved in Christ, when we began to think about those experiences from childhood, it just brought chills upon our spirits because we remembered and we reflect the intimacy, the intimacy related into that particular act. And one of the things we realized is that when we were in the arms of our father, we was in the arm of our mother, we felt protected. We felt safe. We felt a sense of, of strength. We felt a sense of, of bonding. We felt a sense of warmth. We felt a sense of, of joy. The fact that we were hugging our parents' necks. And that's what happens when we come to worship. We come to worship, we're coming into God's house and we're just thanking God 
for his presence. We let God know that we miss him and we just want to hop into his arms and hug his neck tight. Never, never to let go. And so we found out in terms of this intimate bond between God and his children, that's why Jesus says nothing can separate us from the love that is found in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us as the Bible told us. Nothing can separate us, nor death, nor life, nor principalities. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. And as this verse went on, it said, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. So I just want you to be encouraged today that you are a child of God. And I just want you to know that God has come into your life and he wants you as a child of God is just to joyfully approach him and hop up into his arms and hug his neck, never to let go. That's what it means to be redeemed. That's what it means to be a follower of Christ. That's what it means to have the joy of Christ in our life. That's what it means for the spirit himself to testify with our spirit that we are indeed God's children. I hope and pray that this reflection on last night's Bible study has been a help to you. And once again, if you would like to join us for this, for this spiritual, spiritual moment that we have every Wednesday night at 630, you're welcome to join us. All you have to do is email us at office at the East End Baptist Church. Dot com. My time is up. God bless you. I apologize for going a little bit long today, but when you think about the goodness of God, you can't help but just express your love for him and your intimacy. As a matter of fact, as soon as I get off this uh, session today, I'm just going to go from a spiritual standpoint and, and, and hop into the arms of God and hug his neck tight and just whisper in his ear, Lord, I just miss you today. I just love you today. And I just I just don't want you to put me down because I feel a sense of safety, a sense of strength, and a sense of joy. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. As a matter of fact, you can go jump into God's arm as well. Amen. God has broad enough arms that he not only can hold me, but he can hold you too. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.